none of that palaver. How are you? Hey, more than Fati tiri ki te rangi, ko te aroa ki te whenua. Fati tiri ki te rangi, ke kone te perimia i te kaurahoa whiti whiti, me tūwhara te kuru peti. Fati tiri ki te rangi, nga tata katoa, ke kone. Prime Minister, the Honourable St. Jones, a warm welcome to te aroa. A warm welcome again amongst the community of leaders that are assembled here this morning. Uh, in this brief mihi to you all, uh, a welcome to our special community that, uh, that reflects, I think, the best of our nation. So with that, a warm mihi, kia whakohoki mai, kia koe e Shane, mai tēnā i te whare whawhao te ao kapurangi, te awa nei kōrero, mai te taitokero, ka haere mai ki konei, tēnei ka mihi ko ane ki a koe. A kūranga tira, a kutua kana, a koe tia kūrahi, Te āreki anuru koutou katoa i tau mai, mihi rau atu kia koutou kia tau mai, kia whakanui ai tō tātou rangi. So to all of you who are gathered again, welcome to you all. On the hat that I wear at the Road Relax Council, can I just say, mihi mai rā, mihi mai rā, whakatou mai. Once again, welcome, welcome, thrice welcome. Kia ora tātou. Turuturua a rangi ātea. Ki a papa tuanuku e hora nei. Ko ia te rea katupu. Ko ia te hou katupu. E pihi ana i te u kaipo. Ka whiti te rā ka rangona te reo mana mana hau. Ka rangona hoki te pāma mai ka tō te rā. Ahako ki tēhea whānau, ki tēhea kāinga, ki tēhea marae. Ko rātou ki a rātou, ko tātou ki a tātou, tēnā hūtou, tēnā hūtou, tēnā tātou katoa. Can I respond to the assemblage today on behalf of the Prime Minister, my fellow MPs, the Manuhiri? My role is very simple, to acknowledge the customary words of welcome in this site of great legacy. We have spent quite a bit of time showering fiscal pixie dust in Rotorua. <laughs> Not only should you count yourselves very fortunate, I will count your response late next year. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tu tawa mai runga, tu tawa mai raro, tu tawa mai roto, tu tawa mai waho. Kia tau ai te mauri tū, te mauri ora ki te katoa. Haumi e hui e, tā e ki e. Can I um, can I just take a moment uh, to acknowledge all of the uh, the dignitaries that we have in uh, the room here tonight? Uh, this is a oh, the room here th this morning, baby brain. Um, uh, we, th this is a beautiful moment actually because it's where I feel as though my worlds collide. Uh, we have government here in the room but uh, we also are uh, surrounded by our community. Uh, just as we look around, uh, sees the faces of our community uh, that have for so long been waiting for uh, this very moment uh, right now. Uh, so can I acknowledge the dignitaries in the room, of course our, our Prime Minister and our Minister of Arts, Culture and Heritage, uh, Jacinda Ardern, our Regional Economic Development Minister Shane Jones, uh, the Mayor of Rotorua, Steve Chadwick, our Te Arua Kaumatua, uh, our Te Arua uh, Kuia as well, uh, and 
uh, just another acknowledgement that this is going to be a short occasion, but it's going to be punchy. Uh, there's going to be some really uh, cool things announced uh, this morning. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, to, I, I want to acknowledge the, um, the magnificent role that the Rotorua Museum has played in our, uh, in our city uh, for the last century as one of Aotearoa's uh, top tourism destinations and heritage custodians. Uh, our first speaker is no stranger to investing in the history of our city uh, so that our community can have a better future. Uh, from helping to return the New Zealand Forestry Service to Urudako to Rotorua as our Forestry Minister, uh, to enhancing our lakefront uh, through the Coalition Government's Provincial Growth Fund, uh, please welcome up here uh, the Regional Economic Development Minister, Shane Jones. This is a, a, a day of uh, considerable excitement and it's a privilege for me to accompany um, our Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Jacinda Ardern. Naturally, Te Moana Toi Waiariki, this large area of the Bay of Plenty did capture the attention of Cabinet Ministers and we um, created the $3 billion fund with a hierarchy of interests and things as significant as investing in endowment legacy assets, such as what the Prime Minister is soon to talk about, have as much to do with bedding down a future for our young people as it does in terms of us celebrating and cherishing our past. This particular project is something that has loomed large amongst a host of the stakeholders in Rotorua, both Māori and Pākehā. It's something that as a lad, when I was at St Stephen's School in the 70s, we visited and indeed we learned quite a bit about the history of Rotorua, the lakes, but the people who give you the character of this area. This is um, not the only thing, uh, folks, that our government is doing in the Bay of Plenty. Soon we will be holding a large gathering of landowners up the coast from you, uh, near Te Kaha, Kōkore, to ensure that not just areas that have significant groups of business and population centres get to benefit from the Provincial Growth Fund, but we go to those areas where we want to see prosperity as well, because unless people feel confident in staying in the more isolated areas of the Bay of Plenty, we're only making a large burden or a rod for our back in the future. So you will see ministers, myself and others, frequenting the broader area. But today, I'm not here to talk about a billion trees. I'm not here to argue with any of your farmers. I'm not here to do anything other than to introduce our Prime Minister, Right Honourable Jacinda Ardern, who I must say, when I was in Melbourne two Fridays ago, a cab driver asked me where I was from. I said, I'm a politician from New Zealand. And he said, oh, New Zealand, you guys have that young prime minister, huh? I said, oh, how do you know that? He said, traffic came to a standstill in Melbourne when she last spoke. Thank you very much. <laughs> Whare e tūnei te marae e tā koto ana, tēnā kōroa, e ne mātei maha, haere, haere, haere. Nā tangra whenua o tēnei rohi o Rotorua, tēnā koutou. Tātou nā kānohi e hui mai ana, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Um, thank you all so much for giving of your time this morning for uh, the warmest of welcomes, um, Monty. Uh, I want to acknowledge you, um, Mayor Steve. Um, I'll have a little bit more to say about you later, but it's always a delight to see you. I think that the thing that we struggle with, having served in Parliament together, and Steve, I'm considering, I consider one of my aunties. And my natural inclination is always to immediately catch up with her as soon as I see her. So I'm holding back while we sit on the stage um, together. But thank you, Steve, for your advocacy, for your leadership locally, um, and for your warm welcome here today. Um, I want to also acknowledge uh, uh, local members of Parliament, um, our MC Tamati um, Coffey for uh, being here during what is actually your um, parental leave. So I want to acknowledge um, uh, you and your whānau. I understand babies here and it's lovely, lovely to see you. And Angie Warren-Clark who works across this area as a Labour MP um, as well. 
Uh, it's always special for me to come, um, come back to Rotorua, and I say this every time I visit, but um, Rotorua is a place of nostalgia for me. Um, when I was quite young, when I first started school, um, my family lived in Murupara, and so uh, uh, Rotorua was, um, was the big city for me. And so every Saturday we would make a family pilgrimage uh, um, from Murupara to Rotorua to do our, um, to do our shopping for the week. Um, I would, on most occasions, uh, spew um, in the back of the car. <laughs> um, such was the trip in those days, a little bit windy for a little one. Um, but I just loved coming here. I loved it. Uh, it was a real adventure. Uh, and so I have significant memories of this place as a child. And there is, there is no more significant memory for a place like Rotorua than the beautiful building um, that is the bathhouse. You know, it is absolutely iconic, uh, and for good reason as well. You know, this is a very, very special day for this beautiful Elizabethan-style building. Some of you may not know that the bathhouse is celebrating a birthday today, 111 years old, having first opened on this day in 1908. And the New Zealand government at the time made its first significant investment in tourism and backed the region's plan to really draw people to the bathhouse, and it did. Uh, the iconic New Zealand landmark in Rotorua is one of New Zealand's most photographed buildings, and it has huge heritage value. And I know there is an absolutely no need for me to tell an audience like this about that. It's a treasure for you in the region, but it's also a treasure for the country. And of course, our spaces that not only are heritage spaces in and of themselves, but house taonga that are home to our artifacts, um, that are home to authentic experiences, not only for tourists, but actually for local people to tell their own stories, are increasingly important to us. Unfortunately, though, they are not immune by the effects and impacts of natural events. Uh, natural events do not discriminate against um, our national treasures, uh, no matter how long they have stood. And we've recently seen that um, with the bathhouse being affected and destabilised by the Kaikoura quake and has been closed obviously ever since. And that has put Rotorua, your community, in a state of flux. But it has not stopped the advocacy, it hasn't stopped the hard work, the recognition uh, that the museum is an incredibly important part of who you are your heritage and also your offering to the country and every international visitor who chooses to come here. And so I'm here today to recognise that work, to recognise the place of that tonga, to recognise your advocacy and say that central government is going to respond. Uh, and so on the bathhouse's birthday, we're announcing that we will be investing $20 million to help upgrade Rotorua Museum. <laughs> Of course, those of you who are at Advocates will know, under the Earthquake Prones Building Act, the museum had to be strengthened or be demolished after 10 years. And this is a Category 1 building. It is a beautiful building, and there was no way anyone was going to let that happen. So the government's $20 million funding will contribute to the $55 million overall cost of the upgrade which is the first stage of, as you know, a much larger development for an international scale exhibition and conference centre being proposed at the Government Gardens Cultural Quarter where the museum is. The government investment will go towards the restoration of the museum, which will help get it ready for the next stage of its proposed development. Uh, and that development includes the construction of a sky bridge, a cafe, and development of a digital and uh, uh, interactive experience for vis visitors. Now, I do need to acknowledge the Honourable Shane Jones. The Provincial Growth Fund is funding the vast bulk of this investment, $15 million of the $20 million, which will go towards seismically strengthening the museum. And that's an acknowledgement of the role, the economic contribution uh, that this facility provides the region. And also, the Ministry for Culture and Heritage is putting uh, in the additional $5 million uh, to improve the care of and access to the museum's collections. And the rest of the Ministry's funding will help to go uh, towards upgrading the museum. Receiving 
These two government grants, though, is, as I said, a huge tribute not only to the quality of Rotorua Museum building and collections, but also to the local community and the support that has got you to this point today. The proposed future redevelopment of the wider government gardens, cultural quarter and garden area will attract more visitors. It will encourage people to stay longer and it will encourage a contribution into the wider local community and uh, economy. Uh, the economic impact modelling commissioned by Rotorua Lakes Council anticipates about 371 additional jobs will be created in the region through this initiative and redevelopment. And so that's another reason why we were so proud and willing to partner with the Rotorua community to get it off the ground. And as you've already heard, this is just one of a range of different investments that we've made into the region, courtesy of the Provincial Growth Fund. And when we're at a time as we are in our economic cycle, where we are facing global headwinds, these are exactly the kind of infrastructure investments that we need in our local regional communities to make sure uh, that we keep unemployment low, that we keep our people engaged, and that we keep our regional economies thriving. But I really want to finish by thanking and acknowledging Rotorua Lakes Council, Rotorua Energy Charitable Trust, the Lotteries Grant Board, all for their generous contributions, which are making, enabling that uh, over $50 million investment into the museum, making it a reality and making it happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. My final thanks, as I said though, I want to give to your Mayor. Um, it was some time ago that I got a message from uh, Steve saying, uh, look, we, we need to work together in order to get this project across the line. She immediately identified this was something that we needed to collaborate on. Uh, she was uh, absolutely dedicated, uh, and some might say relentless, uh, in her advocacy, but she was also right. Uh, this was uh, a, a really important contender uh, for the Provincial Growth Fund and for um, the Ministry of Arts, Culture and Heritage Investment as well. Uh, and so, uh, me, Steve, on behalf of your community, thank you for the work that you've done um, in advocating uh, for this beautiful um, taonga and also, happy birthday to the beautiful, beautiful museum. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā And now it's time to hear from uh, the, the, the Manukura herself. Uh, we call her our Manukura. She is our Mayor of Rotorua. Uh, your worship, her worship, uh, Steve Chadwick. Kia ora. Ra. And what a special morning. Uh, wonderful to have you here with our whole family from Rotorua, to be here to welcome you and Minister Jones this morning. And it is very special for us. Uh, can I also acknowledge your wonderful Minister of Finance, actually Grant Robertson. I have to say, please pass back, that he was a bit of a maestro in getting together the various strands that we needed here. So he couldn't be here and he passed that um, <coughs> a message on to us today to say he wished he could be here because this was one of the most tricky projects to actually make it fit. Thank you to the community for being here with us this morning. This is fantastic news, fantastic news. We finish. We can now start the rebuild. It's an incredible contribution to an iconic tongue of our community and a foundation symbol 
of our New Zealand tourism industry. Thank you for showing such great confidence in our district. I know we've had our fair share, but we also knew when I met you at Matamata, Prime Minister, on another PGF uh, announcement, and I slipped an envelope to you, you said, <laughs> this has to be done. We have to find a way because this treasure is bigger than all of us here, here, in this here, room here, today. Here, 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 here. We're really grateful for your support and we won't overdo it, uh, but you can be sure there will be more to come. <laughs> <laughs> this investment, though, will be the catalyst for significant positive economic and social outcomes, as you said, for our community. We envisage that this project will be transformational. The lakefront, the forest developments, all that you have supported through the PGF will create jobs and economic benefits for our district. It will create a foundation for new business ventures to emerge as part of the larger vision for the government gardens, our beautiful gardens in our precinct and our surrounding areas. We've all been incredibly anxious to see this beautiful, wonderful treasure reopened. And it has been a priority for our council. And I thank those that have helped beside me, all of you, on this journey. Te Whare Tango o Te Arawa, to us, is more than just a building. It symbolises our beating heart. Foof. <laughs> Rotorua has always played a major role in tourism, as you mentioned, Prime Minister. And our museum is a big part of that. This investment by central government is really profound and highlights this iconic landmark and the importance to our community and to all of New Zealand and beyond. People emailed me from around the world to say she must be restored. As you mentioned, it's her birthday, and I can't think of a more fitting present than today. It's a new chapter in the beginning of building this wonderful building that has a very colourful and interesting past. It was originally the home to the great South Seas Spa. It later became the home of Tudor Towers, which was a very famous era too of the nightclub, um, as some of the beer dripped down onto our collections below. <laughs> and it also then gained the mana of becoming Te Wharitanga or Te Arawa. We can now move forward with confidence on the work needed to reopen our wonderful, be beautiful building. We've also got an opportunity, so out of chaos comes a new opportunity to restore and refresh people's experience and reveal even more of this wonderful building story. Its location, its age and heritage status has required specialist investigation, assess assessment, engineering and design. And I didn't ever expect the community to understand the complexity of the structure. We've been working very closely, Prime Minister, with Heritage New Zealand, and they've been wonderful every step of the way to ensure that we maintain that integrity and protect its heritage features. We've all been impatient to see the work get underway, but it had to be a very careful process so that she is resilient in the future. There was never any doubt for us that our museum would be restored. It was just a matter of when and how. It was a matter of how we could do it, and as we're doing on our council, who would we partner with? I like the partnership here today. Rotorua Trust came on board with a $10 million contribution. And we're most appreciative of that. Uh, Stuart, if you could pass that back. He knows it. He feels the same about this beautiful building. And that gave us the trigger to be able to enable us to have discussions with central government saying our community walks with us on this journey. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the wonderful commitment of the Very family, and Lynn is here today. She'll be a bit fuckamar about this, but she's waved out, Prime Minister. 
Um, she came with the very, uh, the very charitable foundation and they generously gave $100,000. So when the community started to come around us, it became compelling. We also acknowledge the unwavering and ongoing support of our Museum Centennial Trust under Lyle Thurston's leadership. Thank you, Lyle. You understood our history with the Trust, and they too were determined that this had to happen. So it's a wonderful local story. The museum's closure has been very emotional for us as a community, including all of us who wanted to see those Te Arawa stories and our taonga that have been housed there. I was involved on the Centennial Trust as an MP when the South Wing was added to the historical bathhouse with the then government funding. I love this building. I have to acknowledge the also support of a previous Prime Minister, Helen Clark, that also nudged our Prime Minister to say, this has to be done somehow. So that's wonderful. So we all love this place. Everyone knows I've been a bit persistent and dogmatically approaching any minister who came to town <laughs> and anyone who would listen to me about helping us on our journey. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good partnership, isn't it? I was always confident we'd find a way, and we have with your leadership. And I want to thank you sincerely for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so our legacy will continue. It will continue in partnership, which is the way of this council. We will do it together. The people in this room today, Prime Minister, share a love of telling the stories of this very, very special place. I can't imagine anything more fitting on the 111th birthday of Te Whare Taonga o Te Arawa that we get the final funding to help this happen. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Rotorua has an incredible musical history and legacy around the world, a legacy that the Rotorua Museum often showcases quite beautifully. Uh, and I think that everyone in this room has a memory of the Sir Howard Morrison Quartet. Um, but singers, like any art, are voices that help to carry our stories throughout history. So today, we're treated to the next generation of that great Rotorua legacy. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome the incredible voices of the Rotorua Boys High School Rokura Choir, led by the amazingly talented Alicia Holton. Oh, 
111th birthday of the beautiful Rotorua Museum. It's one of the most iconic buildings uh, in New Zealand and yet since the Kaikoura earthquake uh, it hasn't been uh, safe to utilise. This investment from the Provincial Growth Fund uh, and from Central Government of $20 million uh, will mean that the restoration of this beautiful building can get underway which means more jobs for the region. It finishes the funding so we can restore her. We could never do it alone so our partnership funding with government and seeing how complex it was to put the funding together. That's why it's nice to have Minister Jones with the Prime Minister today. Uh, it's very special to us, as you saw. Uh, the community loved that building uh, dearly, and they want to see her restored and running again. So we had the whole community here. It's about telling our stories about our people and our place and our history, 
and it sits in a precinct that is also very, very significant for us here in the government gardens. So that along with what we're doing at the lakefront and in the forest starts to tell our stories again, but in a new, fresh way. Uh, but we will always carry the legacy of the Te Arawa stories with us. Uh, we're not putting a time frame on it, it's really complex. We're hopeful in two years that she can be opened, but you never know what you find when you get into a building like this. Can you just tell us the state of the building at the moment? Well, the building above the ground is really rather perfect. Uh, it is the basement and so it's the reinforcement right down into the basement and steel reinforcement and quite substantial work so it's not simple.